I have seen so many videos saying that Apple has lost its touch. They're they're failing to innovate, and the the movement they've had since Steve Jobs passed just is not there. And uh, I mean, look, since November two thousand eighteen, Apple stock has has really taken a dive. And the general vibe I get from from media and 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 online is that Apple is doomed. And there's a lot of evidence that people have brought up uh, the lack of pro-grade computer hardware for the pro market, like they used to have, uh, is gone. It's just, oh, it's all like prosumer stuff. Uh, kind of like the loose quality control of software updates and just software releases in general have been buggy. Uh, shoddy design choices for the iPhones and iPads. You know, I, I'm sure you've heard like Bendgate or Flexgate or something like that. Keyboard designs that fail you know, within a year Maybe the fact that it's practically impossible to upgrade your computer once you buy it for a majority of the Macs in the lineup. You might be thinking, uh, John, it kind of sounds like you're on our side. And I agree that Apple has made some questionable design choices, but you really need to stand back and take a look at everything that Apple is doing right now, everything that's going on in the market, and kind of what has happened in the past. Apple has kind of been riding this, this mobile phone wave. And it makes sense because I think like 63% of their revenue is from mobile devices. So from a business sense, it makes sense for Apple to go where the money is. And that's mobile phones. So things like the Mac and other things kind of have you know, gotten less attention. Some of you might be thinking, well, you know, that's, that's not, not the way Steve Jobs did it. That's not the way he would have wanted it, and that's why why things seem so bleak right now. And well, yeah, maybe, but you have to keep in mind that Steve Jobs isn't running Apple anymore. So I want to bring up two points why I think it appears that Apple may be stagnating or plateauing, and that has to do with aesthetics and just the average tech behind the tech. So first, aesthetics. Look at all the companies that have incorporated the, the Apple design language into their products. If, if you look at general electronics for consumers nowadays, they all kind of look the same. They have the same aesthetics, all kind of stemming from like the unibody MacBook Pro from what was it, like 2008 and the iPhone. There are so many similarities between these products. They all kind of look the same. And now even their features, a lot of the features are very identical. You get a smartphone nowadays and you can pretty much do anything on that smartphone that you can do on this smartphone. Many of these devices have very similar looks. Many are built from exactly the same materials and many of them have exactly the same features. Apple has initiated so many of these hardware design innovations and that has really reshaped the way that electronics have looked. Now it's, it's, it's been that way in the industry for many, many years. If you look back when there is a trend of something, all the other companies jump on that trend and maybe borrow design elements or maybe even copy design elements of that successful product. And then somebody innovates and does something completely different and the market follows most of the time. So as far as aesthetics go, a lot of the products look exactly the same. A lot of the products offer very, very similar features. So it is difficult to have an edge up. So now let's take a look at the tech behind all this tech. I feel like it's been pretty stagnated over the past couple of years. And we have seen minor improvements year over year, but they haven't been mind-blowingly innovative. We've seen improvements, but not drastic improvements like we've seen in the past. Uh, one example is like CPU performance. Uh, the instructions per clock, uh, IPC, of CPUs has slowly been getting better, but it hasn't made huge jumps like it has in the past. And that's been going on for like, what, like five years, five, six years now? GPUs, on the other hand, um, kind of the same thing, but they are uh, progressing much quicker than what CPUs have. So GPUs have gotten quite a bit more powerful. And some might argue that that is actually more important right now than CPU power, having a very powerful Graphics card for compute and, and AI and machine learning is more important to the evolution of, of technology right now than CPUs. But anyways, uh, another thing I can think of, monitors, for example. 
I, I haven't been very impressed with the progress of monitors lately in the consumer market. Granted, the very high-end stuff, like there's some really cool stuff coming coming around the corner, but it's so expensive. I, I have two monitors in front of me. One Dell monitor from 2010 and one from 2017. And honestly, I cannot tell a difference between them as far as color accuracy. Uh, the color gamut's exactly the same. They're both premier color monitors. Uh, one is a little bit higher resolution, but the one from 2010 is brighter and, and is more contrasty than the one in from 2017. So that was just one example. And like I said before, on the high end, there is some really cool stuff, but it's so expensive and it's still going to be years until that comes down to the like the two, three hundred dollar price range. So I feel like a lot of products have kind of been equalizing with each other. They're they're all offering very similar things. So not one company is really above the rest of them. And companies that start on the top of that innovation wave start to get pushed down by all the competitors that enter the market with very similar products. And most of the time, the, those companies can release these products at a lower price. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a free market economy. That's how competition is allowed to thrive. And don't think that Apple has just been sitting on its hands this whole time. I mean, most, most truly revolutionary products take years to design, take years to build and prototype and revise and revise and revise and revise and finalize and produce and distribute. And, and most of these products can't even be brought to market until certain technologies are invented or matured enough to bring to the consumer consumer market. And all that takes time on top of all of the other engineering that needs to take place. So keep in mind, most companies also are already working on two model releases above the current one that's out on the market. So where does all this fit in? Uh, where does Apple fit into all of this as still being uh, one of the market leaders in tech? First off, the 2019 Mac Pro. Apple knows it messed up with the 2013 Mac Pro. They know uh, they lost market share because of it. And maybe they care, maybe they don't. But if they do care, they will not mess up this next revision. A company as large as Apple knows why people buy their products and they know why they don't buy their products. The next Mac Pro will either reignite the confidence that many professionals used to have in Apple or it will drive them to other workstations for the, for, for, for the foreseeable future. And I don't think Apple is going to uh, neglect that part of the market share, even though it's a small one for their, their main revenue. But deep down, I know they still find pro users important to the culture and the meaning behind what Apple wants its users to be able to do and create. Second thing is the A12X chip, their processing chip and graphics chip in the high-end iPads. And um, it's the A12 in the iPhone XS Max too. I think it's just the A12, not the A12X, but the A12X is an iPad. Now this chip is a beast and it trades blows with some of the uh, full-size laptop chips. And don't think for one second that Apple uh, doesn't have or isn't a des uh, designing a chip that isn't meant to replace the Intel chips uh, for some, if not all, of their laptops. You know, the promise of a 32-hour battery life without sacrificing performance is a pretty killer feature. Reason three why I still think Apple is not failing and is still the market leader is the iPhone. Now, the iPhone is going to be bringing in money for Apple for the foreseeable future for many years. I mean, it's 63% of the revenue. And people, people want to buy the iPhone. People like it. And it's been the market leader for a very long time. And yeah, maybe it'll come, you know, it'll, it'll come down to second place or third place, but it's still going to be a challenger and still kind of the benchmark that a lot of other phones try to get to. And some do, and some go, you know, go past it, but it is still a, a, a benchmark in the market for iPhones, smartphones. All right, last and not least for this video, 
is software. So Apple is a software company now. It's kind of weird to think of, but it produces hardware, but it is a software company. Take a look at the App Store, okay? The App Store last year made Apple made Apple made Apple about 11 billion dollars. It also made the developers for Apple applications uh, what was it, like 26.5 billion dollars given to developers. Now that's a very lucrative market for people wanting to get into the tech industry, for developers wanting to write programs and, and get their programs out to a super large user base, which is everyone that has an iPhone, everyone that has a Mac. And that is, that is a lot of people. So granted, the App Store is only about 15% of Apple's revenue, but Apple is a software company. iOS, Mac OS X, the App Store, um, all of the uh, auxiliary programs that Apple has, you know, Final Cut Pro, the pro-level applications, and all of the applications that they support from other developers. So that's my take. I don't think Apple is failing at all, uh, regardless of what their stock is doing right now, which is it's a little bit down. That is, is, is not an indication at all as to the health of the company or what is going to happen in the future for this company. The tech market, it's a very volatile market. Things go up, things go down. People get scared. People want to make money really fast. Uh, people lose money really fast as well. And that's just kind of the, the name of the game. But if, if, if you understand what has happened in the past, trends from the past, and what's going to be coming in the future, you'll, you'll probably calm down a little bit and be like, no, Apple's not in trouble. They have a lot of resources. They have a lot of uh, talent, a lot of knowledge in this industry, and they're not going anywhere. Apple's going to be a dominating force in the market of portable computers and portable handheld devices for many, many years. Whew, thanks for listening to my opinion piece there. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please, uh, let's have a discussion in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of my points. If you want to add any, put them in the comments below. And I'd uh, love to talk to you guys there. So um, have a nice day. We'll see you later.